Hey Questers, and welcome to another episode of BMF, the unofficial home for all things Oculus Quest. As November draws closer, so does the release of Oculus Link, the upcoming feature for the Oculus Quest that'll allow you to play PC VR games by connecting your Quest via the USB port to your PC. A lot of people, including myself, are very excited about this new feature, and even though I'll always prefer the tetherless, standalone aspect of the Quest, the ability to transition from standalone to PC VR in mere moments just makes the Quest even more worth the money. Today I wanted to bring you a list of the 20 PC VR games that I personally would recommend you check out once Oculus Link releases. This list isn't in any specific order as I just threw them onto the list as I thought of them. Let's jack in and check them out. The first game on my list is Lone Echo. Lone Echo is a Rift exclusive with a stellar single player storyline. In the game you play as Jack, an AI with a synthetic body, as you help Liv uncover what is causing a mysterious anomaly on Kronos 2, a mining station in the rings of Saturn. This game has many things going for it, but at the top of my list for this game is the story and the tones that you get to experience in the game. Lone Echo from start to finish has you totally immersed in a captivating story that'll keep you thinking after the game has ended. Not only that, but it also looks amazing, and it plays really well as you navigate through the zero-g environments and explore the different areas and locations. Lone Echo is somewhere on the top of my list of favorite VR games ever. Next on my list is Subnautica, an underwater adventure game set on an alien planet. This is an open world exploration game that'll keep you busy for hours as you explore the stunning and sometimes dangerous locations. When you crash land on an alien ocean planet, in order to survive, you have to explore the depths of the foreign planet's ocean. There are many different types of areas to explore, from coral reefs to deep trenches, and each underwater location looks and it feels different. You'll need to manage your oxygen supply while you're exploring and scavenging for items. You also need to craft items from the things you find to survive and construct underwater bases. There is so much going on in this game, from enemies to cave systems and a great story, that it would take me hours to go through all of it. But trust me, it's a game worth checking out. Next up is a game that a lot of people really like and that isn't for this squeamish, and that game is Gorn. Gorn is a gladiator simulator, but not just any gladiator simulator. It is incredibly gory and teetering on, if not jumping over, the line of disgusting. This game is brutal, bloody, and downright disturbing in many ways, and you definitely shouldn't buy this for the kids. With a fully physics-driven engine and a character system that allows you to dismember and disfigure your opponents using various weapons, this game is unlike any other game on this list. I'm not really sure what else needs to be said about this game, so I will leave it at that. Next on the list is one type of game that the quest is sorely lacking, and that is the racing game Dirt Rally. In Dirt Rally, you race rally cars through dirt and other terrain. With a massive amount of vehicles, over 70 stages, and online multiplayer, Dirt Rally is one of my go-to racing simulators in VR. It's just a lot of fun with an in-depth game that includes tournaments, championships, vehicle tweaks and upgrades, and just a great overall experience. Plus, the game just plays great and the speed feels intense. Dirt Rally 2.0 has also been released, but in my opinion, I'd stick with the first one. In Death is a VR shooter set in a procedurally generated medieval world with roguelike elements. In this game, you enter the afterlife only to discover that heaven is abandoned and crumbling. In order to restore harmony to the afterlife, you'll need to explore and defeat the enemies. With its stylistic and surreal art style, and environments and its awesome weapons system, this game is just a lot of fun to play. The ranged combat works incredibly well as you take out enemies with your longbow. You'll need to pick up loot and keep on your toes to survive as each run is different because they're randomly generated maps and enemies. In Death also has a very unique locomotion system that uses teleportation arrows and teleport shards, along with the option for free motion if you choose. Budget Cuts comes up next on my list of PC VR games. Budget Cuts is an outlandish, futuristic stealth game in which you take it upon yourself to save your job from the growing workforce of robotic workers. By what else? killing every last one of them. Test your ninja skills as you skulk around the office dispatching robots and working your way through the office. This is a great game not just because it's funny, outlandish, and it plays really well, but because it functions so beautifully that it totally immerses you in the story and the gameplay. Next on my list, of course, is Minecraft. And I'm not talking about the Gear VR version of Minecraft either. I'm talking about the full six degrees of freedom Minecraft that is not just super immersive, but also changes the game from just a game to a full-on experience. You can 
spend hours in the world of Minecraft crafting items and surviving the nights or create your own VR world in creative mode. VR takes this game and elevates it so much it's ridiculous. If you're already a fan of Minecraft, you have to check it out. And if not, check it out anyways. It's incredibly fun and immersive, even with the graphical style. Next up, Elite Dangerous. If you're a fan of space games at all, this game is amazing, really. Take control of your own spaceship as you explore the galaxy in this online multiplayer epic. As you explore the Milky Way galaxy, you'll forge alliances, defeat enemies, upgrade your ship, gain higher ranks, and discover resources and make money. This isn't your everyday run-of-the-mill space simulator. This game will take you on an adventure that you can sink multitudes of hours in as you work your way up the ranks and, as the game says, blaze your trail. Now, this next game is said to be coming to the Quest at some point, but with no update as of yet, we may have to enjoy it through Oculus Link until that happens. The Climb is one of the most immersive, most relaxing, and scariest, if you're afraid of heights, games that I've had the pleasure of seeing. With four amazing locations that you can climb either at day or night, and different modes from tourist mode, which is easier, to bouldering, which is incredibly intense, and a great multiplayer experience that allows you to race other players' ghosts and work your way up the leaderboard, the climb has plenty of content to enjoy. On top of all that, the environments are stunning, and climbing to the top of each location gives you a stunning view that'll make you pause and sit in awe at its beauty. Want some more space action and exploration? Enter No Man's Sky, the VR update. No Man's Sky was so hyped up that at launch, it was a huge disappointment to many when the game seemed to fall flat in many ways and not deliver the game everyone was hoping for. Fast forward from there and the developers have been amazing at updating the game and creating a game that is not just amazing, but huge with a massive amount to explore and do. Add in the new VR update recently launched, and you can spend hours exploring new worlds both from your ship and on land. With a procedurally generated universe, there is literally a never-ending amount of locations and worlds to explore and survive in. No Man's Sky is an amazing VR experience, and it's definitely something I would recommend checking out. Now it's time for another racing game. In fact, this for me is one of the best PC racing games, not just in VR. Project Cars 2 has 190 vehicles spread across a multitude of racing types and 60 different locations and 140 tracks. This game is immersive, has a ton of content, and is just great fun to play. It also has a great physics system that feels as real as any racing game I've ever played, and it has an amazing online racing platform and community. If you're a racing fan, then this is a game you should look into. Space Junkies is next on my list. Space Junkies is an arcade-style VR shooter with crazy and fast-paced jetpack combat. With crazy weapons, fun multiplayer, and a great overall experience, Space Junkies is just fun. Jump into the arenas and battle other players as you drift through space using your jetpack and blasters to reign supreme and destroy enemies. I like this game because the matches can be crazy and frantic and it plays really well. This next game is one that, although simple at times, has been one of my favorite experiences for years. Batman Arkham VR fulfills the fantasy of every comic book fan out there and allows you to don the cowl of the caped crusader and jump headlong into the comic book world of Rocksteady's Arkham series, arguably the best Batman video game series ever created. Even though some can argue that this game is more an experience than a game, as there is a pretty linear story and it doesn't allow for free movement around the environments, I love this game. You get to meet iconic characters, investigate and find clues, and with a twisted ending, the game is just overall amazing. From the very first moment of descending into the Batcave to the last sequence where you visit Arkham Asylum, you'll feel like you're really there in Gotham. Plus, there are hidden items to find that'll add even more to the game. Trust me, just try it. Asgard's Wrath is one of the newest games on my list, but also one of the ones I'm most excited for. Although I haven't played very far through the game yet, what I have played has been stunning and extremely well done and immersive. The set pieces are incredible, and the gameplay flows well, and it's really a fully fleshed out PC game that happens to be in VR. Just trust me, you won't be disappointed in this game. Until You Fall is another new game, but also a fun one. Although I don't like it near as much as Asgard's Wrath, it is still a fun magic and sword based combat game. It takes place in a fantasy world where you play as a ruined knight fighting horrific enemies. Until You Fall has you battling enemies in different arenas, and it has a plethora of different weapons and combat styles, so you can fight the way that feels best to you. The only downside I had with this game is that after some time it does seem to get repetitive, but if you enjoy arena based combats, then you'll like this game. Next up, Blade and Sorcery. Blade and Sorcery is another combat game, but this game is just a ton of fun with its realistic physics-based combat. Each weapon feels different when you wield it, and they all have a more realistic weight, so no waving your hand around battling. This is a sandbox type of game, and your creativity will drive it. 
The enemies have full body physics, and the weapons react realistically as you slash and pierce soft materials and flesh. The ton of different weapons and spells, plus a lot of fun mods from lightsabers to Thor's hammer and even guns, there seems to be a never-ending supply of fun to be had in Blade and Sorcery. The Mage's Tale is next on the list. The Mage's Tale is a dungeon-crawling VR game in which you play as a mage learning spells to defeat your enemies and rescue your master. Battle huge enemies with one of hundreds of custom spells as you explore the ancient crypts and dungeons. This game is a true wizard wannabe's dream game, as you learn to wield elemental powers in a beautiful looking game. As you progress through the game, you'll feel more and more powerful with each spell and level. It's really just a joy to play this game. Next, Wilson's Heart. Wilson's Heart is a unique, immersive, story-driven, psychological thriller that takes place in a 1940s hospital. This game is creepy and haunting, and tells a story that is extremely well written. I don't want to say too much, so all I can say about this game is that you'll have to try it to understand how good it is. The story is stellar, the acting is amazing, and the gameplay is just top notch. You remember that old Nintendo duck hunting game, right? Well, this game is nothing like it. Or some of it is, but not really. Duck Hunt is a throwback to the 1980s age of gaming and movies as you play a young lad on summer vacation whose mom just rented him the coolest new game for your game system. The title is misleading in this game because although there is duck hunting, the dark story and creepy horror-like elements take this game from a simple duck hunting game to something else entirely. You may not want to take the old NES system out of storage for a while after playing this game. Last on my list is L.A. Noir: The VR Case Files. This game places you in the shoes of Detective Cole Phelps in the rock star universe of L.A. Noir. It's your job to solve brutal crimes on the streets of L.A. in 1947, with cases inspired by real events. There are seven cases in total, and although some people don't like the game and some people love it, I have been a sucker for detective games and movies for a long time, so I really enjoyed it all together, and I think it's something you should definitely check out. So there you have it, my list of the 20 PC VR games you should try next month when Oculus Link releases. Are there any games you would add to the list? I, for one, am super excited to experiment with the Oculus Link and take advantage of PC VR gaming with an already amazing headset. Keep an eye out for more content based around the Oculus Link as we get closer to the release of the update. If you want to get the most out of your quest and the best bang for your buck, then subscribe to BMF for more quest-related content and hit that bell icon. Plus, if you're looking for more of my quest videos, you can check them out here. Thanks so much for watching and happy questing.